uh, Alizov versus Gregorian was the main event. Uh, again, anytime that we're watching one fight nights now on Prime, I'm tuning in, man, because every fight that I've watched Dude, so far is pretty good, except for Supergirl. You, text, mm, you texted me if you texted me mid mid card about one of the fights unprompted, and I was like, Ramirez, watching yeah, live. I'm I'm watching, and I wasn't oh. doing anything with it on the background. Like I'm watching. Yeah, there was, was some good. fun ones on this one. There was, Man, again, so- Supergirl, eh. Um, the fight was okay. <laughs> uh, but uh, Blunderbuff says, I'm literally just here for this event, so I got time. Blunderbuff, shut up. <laughs> so I got, Buff, shut up, Blunderbuff. Shut up, Blunderbuff. Uh, Alizov, <laughs> first time I watched this guy, uh, I believe the first fight I watched was him versus, who was it, Superbond? Probably Superbond. Superbond. And I'm like, okay, Will's talking to me about Superbond, the legend of Superbond. And then here comes Alizov and takes the title from him. And you're like, dude, you don't dude. understand. This was like a huge upset. Well, no, it wasn't it wasn't so much an upset. It was just I mean, when that fight happened, it was it was pound for pound number one versus pound for pound number two. So it wasn't like an upset. It was just a big mm. deal. Um and Alizov, the run that he's on right now is like absolutely legendary. Like it's it it's insane that the the run he's on. Uh, okay. He has let's see. So he beat Sinachai, he knocked out Superbon, and then now beats Gregorian. That's insane. The, yeah. Those three alone, like that's nuts. And now he's calling out Petrosian. Like it's it, the guy's a fucking animal, dude. Um, but uh, hey, you know this what? Is, Probably the same testing as uh, Jake Paul's uh, promotion. I think here. Hey, look, I mean, look at these guys. Hey, what are we doing here? What are we, what are we trying to do? <laughs> I'm just but, saying, uh, bro. yeah so they fought before like a decade i think it was literally like 10 years ago uh they fought twice there was a no contest and then gregorian beat him by decision in, in their second fight so this was like well can anybody beat alizov now well here's someone who did so let's see what happens and gregorian is very good like really skilled uh dutch style right um and you could see because Alizov is so good at going in and out. He darts in, he darts out, and he hits you. He's like a drive-by shooting, like kickboxing style. It's very cool. Um, and so many different weapons. But he needs space to do that. You know, you can't just you can't just do that if someone's smothering you. So I thought Gregorian's uh I thought his game plan to just walk him down the entire time and smother him, don't let him have any space to dart in and out. That was a good game plan. But I mean, look at Olivia in the background. Such a yeah, savage. So, I, I love watching that guy. I don't know why. He's really good. He is and, fantastic. Uh, he just takes no bullshit. Like they say, no nonsense. Keep the real no sense. nonsense. The yeah, real no he, nonsense. Yeah, but Cho- yeah, <laughs> there you go. But every single time Gregorian would step forward, he's hit with something, and it's different every time. I mean, Alizov. Did he see on, off the back in that first round, Gregorian? Well, how could you not be? You're walking in, yeah. you're getting hit with an inside leg kick, an outside leg, leg body kick, shots. Uh, body shots, uh, the jab, the the hooks up top, like, and and then eventually, like this picture is perfect. Eventually, Alizov found that that step in knee. Every time Gregorian would walk in, he just eat that knee, <laughs> put the knee down. Gregorian would try to throw the lead left hook, and Alizov's out the side door. Just, I mean, to to see somebody who is so good at darting forwards. And yeah. uh, cracking people, and then exiting off the off the far angle to see someone like that fight so brilliantly on the back foot for the entire fight was, and at such a pace, you talk about being exhausted and still going regardless of what the body language looks like towards the end of the fight. God damn! But Gregorian did uh, that fifth round was a little dicey there, huh? I was gonna say that that fifth round, Gregorian, I felt like was a lot more willing to eat a few shots. To throw combinations because like you he said was like you i need like this now. going in with that lead left or just going in with the straight right shot and then he'd back off because like i felt like he was hesitant and waiting to see what was coming his way in that yeah. last round man he was going for broke and he made that last round so exciting man he uh, he, caught yeah, he really did a few times. yeah he did uh i'm gonna try uh i've been having weird things with the uh uh mm. share the share screen i'm gonna try this really quick can you show a clip? Yeah, let's see. Let's see. This is the final round, uh, I believe. 
Oh, so much fun. I mean, look at this pace, dude. Look at that uppercut. And look, dude, Gregorio was game. And Olivia Costas, get out of my face. I mean, could you hear the audio? No, audio did not come through. Audio did not come through, I'm told. Uh, that was uh, the crowd. I mean, the crowd was going crazy. They're in Thailand, right? They're in Lumpini. Um, in the post fight interview, the Alzab gets the win, right? It was a beautiful performance the whole fight. Uh, while they're interviewing him, dude is on the verge of throwing up. Did you watch the interview? No, man. It was, I was like, please let this man go, like, <laughs> let him go because he's about to throw up. I mean, the guy looked exhausted. That's um, amazing, man. Dude, again, yeah, combat I mean, sports in general, man, just pushing the body to the limit. Like the human body, yeah. what it's capable of doing, right? Uh, with all the aliens that have been hitting us up recently, uh, I hope that they've been yeah. watching MMA to be able to see like, wow, this is this is actually amazing. Well, so that's what I've always said. This is going to sound stupid, but I've always said the 2005 middleweight Grand Prix uh, from Pride that uh, Shogun won. Um, all the adversity he dealt with in that, I mean, getting dropped by uh, Overeem, coming back, finishing him uh he beats uh who was it um i don't remember but the the uh Vonderle no finally fought arona and then shogun fought whatever it was the the tournament was insane what shogun had to go through um and the fact that he won that that whole thing if aliens came and they're like how what do we learn about people show us what like, what humans are capable of or like what who are you i would show them that whole grand prix and just watch shogun go through and that whole would tournament. say the human body is amazing the human body is resilient. And you know what else? They go hard. And they and they say, and you know what else? Pride never die. <laughs> <laughs> you wearing pride shirts by the time that they yeah. get beat back up. Oh, <laughs> That'd be hilarious. Uh, they'd be <laughs> in your living room. They'd be like, hey, can I can I take that glove? Can I take yeah, that? yeah. Oh, grandpa. Show me gloves, show me. So. Yeah. Uh, but yes. Um, <laughs> very fun says, grandfather hurt 10 years ago. Oh. Huh? <laughs> it was bad it was close man it was close and it uh, sucked because it was it was touching he was dedicating the fight to his uh grandfather who just passed away who said that he wanted uh he wanted nothing more than for alizov to get that win back over gregorian and he just passed away a couple months ago pretty sad damn um uh and monster tony coming through says uh nate and jake should have fought with the same tie box rules <laughs> man yeah that uh, would have been interesting. I wonder how Jake Paul throws uh, or can eat lane kicks. Be interesting. Not probably not very good. But yeah, we're, probably not very good. Yeah, we're, but I was just gonna say Lumpini Stadium. It's, mm. it's just it just adds some extra intensity to the fights as you're watching it. Whenever yeah. they land an elbow, whenever uh, they land a, a, a knee, anything, and it's just all oh yeah oh in the background it's over so cool. and over again. <laughs> so we've said it before. I'll say it again. Like we have to plan. Like a story of the fight event where a bunch of listeners, you know, and us, like we just meet up for one fight, Lumpini Stadium, man. Oh, that'd be, that would so, be cool. so sick, man. Think about that. I would love to go to Lumpini, dude. I, I mean, it's every time, every fight. I mean, this next one, I'm going to get, I'm going to make sure that we have audio for it because yeah. the crowd is just insane. Because Ooh, Tawan Chai. No, it's shit. It's not the next one. We got to no, the go next through, one. Uh, uh, we got to cover Mike and Musmeti. Yeah. Uh, okay. Versus uh, the Monkey King. Monkey God. Monkey God. That's what it is. Thank you for correcting. Uh, dude, uh, you know what? I should have put a picture of uh, Jared Brooks as he was walking out with the uh, the monkey mask. Oh, yeah, dude. What a class. I mean, just classic. So good. I think I sent it to you. Yeah. When I was like, bro, his walkout mask, fantastic. I Mikey think, Musumeci, uh, uh no mask, uh, as he walked out. Yeah. And there's just something so <laughs> awkward about Mikey Musumeci that makes me love him. Um, because I mean, he's he also looks, just very uh, – he's just he's just a good dude, you know? You can tell he's just he, a good dude. Yes, he looks so normal in the sense <laughs> yeah. that, like, you see these – okay, you see Jared Brooks. He's walking out with the monkey mask. Dude, he's ripped, the MMA champ. Right, MMA champion. You're like – this guy's uh, like on another level, right? Mm -hmm. You see Mikey Musumeci walk out and you're like, this reminds me of some of my buddies in high school that I used to go to Burger King with, you know, and just also shredded. 
absolutely shredded. Shredded. Uh, yes. He's but very unassuming. Shredded. Yeah, he walks out with his glasses on, you know, like he looks uncomfortable just, to be in front of a giant crowd, you know, and yeah. then, like he's walking. And he's like, should I dap people up as I walk by? I'll dap you, but I won't dap the next <laughs> person because I don't know. He might have had some germs on his hand. And he, like, it's just he doesn't very, very unassuming. He yeah. looks very unassuming. And then he gets in there, man. And as soon as that bell rings, he flips a switch. And yeah, he's just trying he's, to break any limb man. he can get a hold of. <laughs> and his transitions, well, that's cool, man. That's what's cool about the um, the submission grappling rules for one championship is that it's not based off like top game. It's not based off who's on top or passing or anything like that. It's literally if you submit him, you win. And then if it goes to decision, who had the most submission attempts? So it's just like, what can I get? What can I get? What are you going to give me that I can try to take? It, it's forcing that. And someone like Mikey who can just take those opportunities and work with them, it's a really good uh, rule set for, for a grappler like him. And, yeah, you can see that he just, like, thrives in it. Yeah, and, uh, again, his transitions, always attacking something, man. Uh, mm -hmm. I was a little confused as to why, like, when Mikey had Brooks back mm -hmm. and he was working towards the submission that the ref stood him back up. Yeah, I, I, I thought that was weird too. I think I think they're just trying to make it more exciting with the grappling. Uh, they don't want long stalemates. And it's that we're going through a weird phase now in MMA, especially where uh, like backpacking is a very real thing and people will get the back early and basically just have that the whole round and it's just around out the window and the, yeah. the choke never comes. So I'm I'm wondering if if the like consensus is starting to change on uh, back control and as, and I don't know, it's, it's going to be interesting to see how that evolves. And, and if that's not as uh, people have a shorter leash for it, maybe uh, coming soon. I don't know. It's going to be interesting. Yeah. But yeah the stand up from like, the back. Hey, and, and we're Mikey in a grappling saying, submission match. You have Mikey Musumechi on somebody's back. You don't yeah. think he's going to fucking go for the finish? Get out well, of my I know, face, yeah. Ref. And it sucks. Get out he of my face. That Walk out of the bikini right now. Did you watch the interview? When he said he was working towards a badass submission? He's like, I've been working on the submission, and I and I almost got the setup for it, and, and then they stood it up. So it was a little bump, and I was like, what was it? Yes. I want to know what it was. <laughs> and now there's a cliffhanger. What was that yeah. submission? Then Mikey Musumechi also said that he has some news coming on later on down the road. Oh, I know. I wonder what that is. I'm so worried, dude. I don't want to see him in MMA. Please don't let well, it be Well, they've that. talked about – there's hints that maybe Mikey is going to do a grappling event with uh, Mighty Mouse over in Qatar when they go to oh, Qatar. That'd be sick. So maybe that's what it is. Uh, that'd be, be fun to watch. Um, you know, they're like, so what? what is this uh, thing that you have coming up? Wait, what? And he goes, uh – I don't know if I can announce it. I don't it know yet. if I'm allowed to. He said it. it was super awkward. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I love this guy. Give me more Musumechi, man. Everybody needs yeah. more Musumechi in their life. Yeah, definitely. Uh, the finish was also super sick, right? Um, yes. He gets the, uh, he sets the triangle up, but it's backwards, right? Where normally you'd want mm -hmm. the lock, this lock on the other side of the head. Um, but. Getting the control is is important, obviously, and flatting him out. Brooks did a good job defending, but he basically uses that lock to attach attack the arm and go for the straight arm lock, which is a cool position, man. Really cool position. It is, and just and again watching him work methodically. Whatever you, this is another example, right? Yeah. Seeing the lock this puts both I'm not arms a huge like fan right of near the elbow. The I don't like that yeah. he can kind of use the the ropes to escape a submission a little bit, but look at the way he, he feeds his arm in right there. Yep. Beautiful. He attacks the arm. Look at that. Ref look at that leverage. Over. Oh, so yeah. sick. As soon as his uh, hips went up, right? Arm down, yeah. hips up, and, and, and the he had no other option but to it. tap. But yes, uh, you know, Blunder Bob talks about the uh, Brooks uh, being so aggro, but even he mm -hmm. can't be a dick to Mikey. Uh, I thought that was awesome too at the end. You know, they're just going back and forth, uh, big yeah. hug with each other, smile on their faces. Um, and then uh, Monster. Monster Tony says, uh, Bro is banking, gets a 50K bonus every three to four months. Yeah, it's amazing. How cool too, because like jujitsu is not, it, it, it's unless you're like, jujitsu is tough to make money. 
with mm -hmm. you know what i mean so yeah. with one doing this with these belts for submission grappling and then just throwing out bonuses if you get the finish like it's just so sick to see because mikey isn't making this money outside of this if i mean he's probably he probably still would be making good money uh doing some sponsors here and there as, yeah sponsorships at other tournaments things like that yeah. but nothing like nothing like this i'm no. sure he's making a ton of money good for cool. him dude good, good for, for him. him he deserves it all right uh we can move on to the next one where we had uh top one chai versus kuya dude <laughs> Tawan Chai is mentioned next. arms earlier. Yeah, Blunder <laughs> Blunderbub mentioned Blunderbub. the arms. So not a good night for man. Tawan Chai uh, was it his last fight where he fought uh, Yusupov? Was it the last oh, yes, one? The did? wrong guy, dude. You didn't watch it? I thought you watched it. I I probably did, but considering that your boy just started watching one like a few months the back, names? yeah, the names do not stick with me. It was the last. It was his last fight where. It was uh, 30 seconds in where he throws that outside leg kick and uh, takes him out with an outside leg kick 30 seconds into the mm. fight because he kicks so hard. Um, and yeah, Blunderbuff says, yes, it, yes, it was. Um, so now he's like, I collected a leg. I've had knockouts. I collected a leg now. Can I collect an arm? And Kyria, who's, dude, David Kyria is very good too. Like glory kickboxing. This is also, this is kickboxing. This isn't Muay Thai. Uh, yeah. Tawan Chai's style is very uh, it favors Muay Thai clinching knees um, he landed an elbow <laughs> in the clinch yeah, on yeah. the ropes <laughs> ref saw it though. and I was like he's like hey whoa 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 that's not what we're ref doing here and he's like yeah but um, <laughs> all I need is one no joke yeah <laughs> but but it's I don't want people to see this and think like okay he beat some guy I've never heard of you know what I mean that's not what yeah. this was Kyria is very good uh Blunderbub says, uh, man just starts, has to start hanging limbs in his living room as trophies. Yeah, mm -hmm. man, seriously. So the game plan in this was, uh, Kyria did a great job, I thought, um, because boxing is something that Tawan Chai is not, you can tell he's still not fully comfortable with. Uh, Kyria was landing some good shots uh, with the hands as the fight was going on. But Tawan Chai just... And you want to smother him, right? Because he's such a good kicker. You want to smother him, take away that kicking range. So you walk forward, you take take kicks on your on your shell, uh, try to get in close, smother him, and start landing those hands. And he was doing pretty good uh, at that. Up but eventually, chill. eventually that <laughs> that arm will snap if you just keep block. And what are you yeah. what are you supposed to do? What do you even do? Yeah. Because if you if you if you don't walk him forward, it's a catch twenty two, man. Yeah, because if you don't walk him forward, you don't try to smother him, he's going to light you up with a bunch of kicks. Uh, so you have to walk him down. You can't you just eat the kick to your face. You have to block it. But you have no control over if your arm's going to snap at all. Um, and it did. <laughs> and it broke. <laughs> yeah, and as soon as that last one, I think there's a picture of it too, on the, the, the last kick that he blocks, and his arm just goes down, right? And he just, he, he just nope. kind of... Puts his glove up to Tom when I was like, "Hey, man, you got me, you got me." And looks yeah. at the ref, and the ref's like, "Okay, let's let's not continue." Um, yeah, I and and they were talking about Rich Franklin called it out at the start of the round. He was like, "I'm pretty sure the arm's already broken," uh, mm -hmm. and then he kept fighting, and, and then and then he just keeps blasting that high kick, and it's like, "Oh my god, it's it's broke." And then I think he landed two after he talked about it already being broken. Uh, and yeah. uh yeah that was all she wrote i'm trying to pull up um a picture of the x-ray uh ooh cuz like hlb comer said we like uh broken limbs we like the breaks you know and i think i just <laughs> got it right here oh sweet okay but yeah uh so i've watched uh, taiwan chai taiwan chai fight a couple times mm -hmm. uh he does he fight more often in muay thai than he does in kickboxing yeah. then this okay. this was his kickboxing debut. Well, there is the broken uh, broken arm. Yeah, I mean, look at the I chips. There's like a chip of it off the like. Ooh. This this guy right here. Yeah. You know. It's disgusting. HB Comer says broken Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, Tom Tom This was his first um, first kickboxing match. Uh, he's trying to rise up the ranks because I think he wants to fight um uh alizov in kickboxing 
Uh, oh. He is the Muay Thai champ, and he's defending his Muay Thai belt against Superbon in October. That's going to be insane. Uh, I like that. That's going to be nuts. Uh, but let's see. We talked about Lumpini crowd. Let's yeah. make sure we can uh, hear this. Oh, the audio. Yeah, yeah. Let's see if it works. Let's see if this works, fellas. Shout out, Rick. Looks like it's going to. Let me know if you hear uh, the audio. Yep. Look at these kicks. I mean, just over and over and over against that arm. Yeah. And your arms can only take so much, you know? Your body can only take so much. Again, I know we spoke yeah. about the body, human body being... Oh. Listen to that. It's so resilient, but... Uh, come on. Look at these kicks. That was the one. Like taking a bat off your arm over and over and over again. Do this last one that breaks it. Oh. Oh. And then you see the picture and it's like. Yeah. That'll do it. That'll do it, man. What a what a win though. Just blasting him with kicks until he breaks it. Wild. All right. I think we have two more fights to cover. Uh next one is uh let me see. John Lineker versus uh, Jai Woon Kim. Yeah, Jay Lineker Kim. coming back after losing his belt. Um, and this was not an easy win for him. He had to dig deep for this one. <laughs> he sure did, man. Uh, I thought that uh, Kim had uh, some beautiful timing on his takedowns early on. Landed he some really nasty did. elbows. Um you know, Lineker getting creative with uh, some big step-ins in the second round to close a distance because mm -hmm. it seemed like he had a hard time with it in the beginning. Um, you know, but what a crazy third round, man. Uh, by that time, yeah. he was a little more tired. Uh, you have Lineker that's stuffing the well. takedowns. Yeah. Yeah, that, um, was, that was scary. Once Lineker starts shrugging off your takedowns and not having to sprawl or anything and just literally just chucking you off, that's like, oh, no. Yes, because now He's you're coming. like, oh, they call him <laughs> Hands of Stone? Let me find out why right now. Holy yeah. smokes, man. Uh, I don't know if you have a clip of it, but that, that little combo at the at end. At the end? I do. That puts uh, – oh, of course you do. I can always count on let's you having see. that ready, dude. Uh, but this is well, something that uh, – I have it, but let's not say it's ready. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, uh, but, yeah, it was a rip to the body. I believe it was with the right. Right, Will? Yeah. Bam, bam, Boom, and then comes the back voice. up with the left. And uh, hooking with the voice, yes. And but you don't put him out with, with uh, a few Dunlap. seconds left. No. Yeah, they say uh, the the phrase is you don't uh, don't hook with the hooker, you know, because yeah. John Lineker bangs, man. And here it is. This is literally five seconds left of the fight, which if it goes to decision, he probably loses. Uh, and here it is. It's going to go quick. All right. Or it's just not going to play. Yeah. Sooner or <laughs> Later, it will come up. It's going to go quick, guys. Just you wait. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my God. All right. Well, uh, Here just is. take our word for it. If it doesn't Here pop it up, is it going to play this? Man, Ooh. right hook to the body, left hook up top. And then I think it was Herb, was it? Yeah, it was Herb. Herb Dean, he's like, should I? Should I hop in? Should I not? Bam. Oh. Classic Lineker. It's right on his ass, man. <laughs> Lineker's terrifying, dude. Look at that. Oh, beautiful. And so how many seconds were left when they actually, when Herb stepped in? I think there was like one second left. Oof. It was crazy. Oof. Rough. Yeah. Uh, but, dude, awesome fight. Awesome fight. And, again, uh, I'm watching this, and I'm like, man, I'm so happy I'm watching one now. Let's go. And then uh, the last fight we're going to cover Umar uh, Khan versus Marcus Buchecha. Dude. Rug Rug versus some would Buchecha. Say They've been, uh, some would say Buchecha, some would say Rug Rug, some would say Khan, some would say Almeida. You know, they got all kinds of names. <laughs> potato, but, potato. Potato, potato. <laughs> this fight, talk about pride never die. This felt like a pride fight. Just <laughs> two big old boys, grapplers, swinging and banging. 
crazy exhausted just i mean this felt like a pride fight a hundred percent felt like a pride fight yes um and once again i i just think about the third round where both men are exhausted yeah exhausted and uh what what happened i think the the ref stood him up at some point right well so yeah buchecha herb dean had a tough one in this fight because buchecha is a grappling wizard right jujitsu wizard uh rug rug is uh um from senegal there's like a very specific lamb. wrestling type if you watch if you watch it's lamb it's uh, called lamb. what was that lamb lamb the wrestling over there in oh senegal? the wrestling is it okay yeah yeah so if you haven't seen it um i thought you meant the country i was like what no uh <laughs> <laughs> the the gra- his grappling exchanges are nuts over there it's a lot of like spinning on top of people and like maintaining that top pressure or not top pressure but really allowing someone to, to move underneath you and, and you stay on top. A lot of crazy scrambles. Um, I thought I had Buchecha by submission. I was like, he's going to submit in round one because Rug Rug's not going to be able to stop the takedowns. And uh, Buchecha is a wizard. And then he stopped takedowns and he took him down and he was very good on top. And there were yeah. some fun grappling exchanges, but, and, and they were clearly exhausted. Rug Rug is a little bit better. I think at striking at this point in their careers, both pretty early in their MMA careers. Um, but eventually they started saying, who needs this jujitsu? Who needs this lamb? Uh, I'm just going to start trading. <laughs> and they just went to war, even though they were exhausted. <laughs> yeah. And again, both of them just caution to the wind, uh, arms yeah. down shooting from the hip. And there's some times where like Buchecha would go like through like a left hook, right hook. But yeah. in between you also had rug rug that was throwing, Left hook, right hook. And like both are <laughs> doing the exact same combo like over and over Staying again. in the pocket. <laughs> oh my God. It, it was insane. Uh, yeah. But uh, Buchecha ends up losing, huh? Buchecha loses. is his first loss first in loss. MMA. Like I said, they're both very early in their careers um, with MMA. Uh, mm. But yeah, he takes the loss. Uh, a teachable moment, I think. Maybe uh, some things to work on going back. Uh, but if we want to see what we're talking about with how crazy this was. Look at oh, these guys go. swinging. I, this is exactly what I'm talking about. Hook, hook. Hook, hook. Look at these hook, guys, hook. dude. Hook, hook. <laughs> and then me from Buchecha, and then a right hand by Rugger and another one. I mean, just crazy, dude. What are the, like, these guys have crazy chins, too. Yeah. This was insane. So much fun. Just exhausted. Very Take fun grappling, though. Rug Rug just landing some big shots with that right hand. <laughs> it's just crazy. Another good one. But look at her Dean too. <laughs> and look at Bucetta just going back at him with the BJ Penn shorts. And the short grabs by Rug Rug. Uh, but yeah, like I said, uh, fun fun card. Yeah, and, and Herb Dean, while they were while, during that fight, Rug Rug kept grabbing the shorts, uh, grabbing the gloves, things like that. And Herb Dean at one point stopped them. They stand him up, and as he's telling him to stop, and that he's that he needs to, that they're standing up. Rugger looks at him and he goes, "No," <laughs> and I was like, "Oh, I've never seen that before." <laughs> and then they get up, and and eventually Herb's like, "I will disqualify you. Like you need to get up." And he was like, "Fine." <laughs> he yellow carded so him too, fun. right? He yellow carded him as well. Uh, Blunderbuss says Herb was spicy. <laughs> Oh, I mean, yeah. yeah, he had his work cut out for him. And then another one where in the post-fight interview, Mitch Chilson is talking to uh, Rug Rug. And he's like, you can tell Rug Rug's like, get me out of here. I need an oxygen tank. Please stop talking to me. And they give him the, the bonus and he drops to his knees. And <laughs> Mitch is like, what do you think about that? And he's just on the ground, <laughs> like just dying. Like, you got to give insane. him something. It was insane. <laughs> All right, man. Super fun. Um, that was it. We covered three events. Yeah, hour and a half. Hour Long and a half. We've this might be the while. longest episode. Yeah. Um, since we started kind of knowing what we're doing, this has probably been the longest episode we've had. Yeah, yeah. It sucks that Rich wasn't here because, man, I was struggling there for a bit <laughs> trying to move all the windows and stuff. <laughs> you did a great job, man. You did a great job. Yeah. Thank you. Blunderbub says, I thought that was a weird bonus. Yeah, in my opinion, it was a crazy fight. I feel like both of them should have got a bonus, honestly, for just kind of the war that, that, that it was. 
but at the same time, I don't know if you reward with a bonus to someone who is like cheating the whole fight pretty much. <laughs> yeah. You know? Got yellow carded and almost disqualified. Still got the bonus. But you know what? I'm fine with fighters getting paid. I do with like, the yellow card, they again, lose a percentage of their purse too, right? Correct. Yeah. And I don't know how that affects bonus, you know. I don't know I don't know if it's also a percentage of the bonus if they say, here's the total, now there's a percentage off, or if it's here's what you would have gotten percentage off and but then you get a bonus on top of everything after that i don't know how that works but um i also really really like they did it a couple times with lineker was one of them um if you miss weight and you have a great performance they tell you in the post-fight interview hey you would have got a bonus but you missed weight so you're not getting one just rubbing it in a little bit more and they should man that's that's great that's a great deterrent because then it's like man me me missing weight just cost me fifty thousand dollars. That's Unless you're finding Wonder Boy, then you won't even get anything. You won't even have <laughs> Yeah, <fight>. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, hey, uh, let's go through and see who we had on today. Regen joined us today. HLB Comer. Uh shout out Colleen. Uh, who else? Uh, we have Blunderbub on here as well. Monster Tony. Always a good time whenever y'all hop on with us and talk some fights. Blunderbub, if we have one fight night to cover. Blunderbub's on. Blunderbub's there. Blunderbub's He's also there. in the the one Discord with me too. That's a fun time. I had to check out though. I couldn't. Yeah, that's another story. Blunderbub, <laughs> uh, you don't have to say right now. Just put in the chat afterwards if you can. Maybe it was just me, but uh, there was a specific fight. I can't remember exactly which one it was. I think it was the Lineker fight where there was like a sound of like a drum beat in the background. I think I texted you about this too. Well, I was like, hey, are you picking this up or is it just me? Well, they do a they do a heartbeat. One does a heartbeat through the stadium during the fights. Oh, dude, that it's was so awesome. annoying. I hated that shit. <laughs> it might not have been that. I don't remember, but no, they th- do that's what it like, sounded like. That's what it sounded like. It was loud enough for me to hear it through my uh, surround sound. And I was like, no, yeah. I don't want to hear this though, the entire time. I'll be honest though, when you're there live at the event and and it's a crazy fight and there's a heartbeat going through the crowd, it is. It's pretty next level. It definitely adds to it. That's exactly what it sounded like, though. And then as yeah. we got closer <laughs> into says, the... That's what that is? <laughs> yes. Okay, so you heard it, too. And as it got closer to the end of the uh, fight, like, it started getting faster. And so that's yeah. why I was like, all right, this somebody's, like, simulating a heartbeat yeah, with sick. that. I love it. I fucking I love hate it. that shit. Dude, <laughs> come on. When you have surround sound going and you hear the crowd, and I love the, oh, oh. Yeah, yeah. But then it's like, dun, 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 dun. I'm, done. I'm like, what is going? Just turn that <laughs> shit off, dude. Let me watch a fight. Because oh, then all I'm I could focus fan. on, all I could focus on at that point was a heartbeat. I'm like, is it getting faster? <laughs> is it getting slower? Yeah. <laughs> does it does it change with what's happening in the fight? <laughs> well, I need you to message Chachi right now and tell me you need to calm down on that. But uh, yeah, shout out to everybody that joined us. Thank you so much. If you uh, were with us the entire time, greatly appreciate it. If you know anybody that loves mixed martial arts. Uh, that loves boxing, uh, specifically Nate Diaz boxing events. Uh, tell them to please <laughs> like, subscribe, and to follow. Uh, story of the fight. We're trying to reach three thousand subscribers, and I think we're like yeah. twenty seven hundred. We're at twenty eight twenty at the start 28, of this video. Twenty now. Uh, so we've gained a couple hundred more here in the last week, I think, um, or a couple weeks. But either way, we're steadily growing. Shout out to all um, y'all. Yes, <laughs> for real. And then, uh, hey, whatever happened to Story of the Fight merch? Don't talk to me about that, man. I just need to do the math. It's literally just math at this point. Oh, shit. It's all ready to go. I just need to figure out uh, some math, and then we'll get it up. But it's close. Cuz math. Really close. Yeah. Cuz math. All right. Uh, do you have anything else, Will? Uh, no. Thank you, everybody. Appreciate it. All right. Well, uh, our regular producer, Rich, is not here. He is currently in a Street Fighter tournament in Las Vegas. But your boy, Will, held it down. Not just talking about the fights, but also in the background working his magic. So shout out to you, Will. And thank you to everybody else for listening to another week of Story of the Fight.